Okay, so we looked at arteries and we looked at how the fact that arteries are under high pressure and they, they're the they're where we measure blood pressure and they're how blood pressure is regulated. So let's let's look at the whole process or idea of how, uh, excuse me, sorry, so uncomfortable where I'm sitting. Um, how we regulate blood pressure using our arteries. Okay, you actually can use multiple effectors, but arteries arteries is one of the effectors for blood pressure. Okay. So let's just start, I'm going to make my chart a little bit different than what's in the PowerPoint to give you guys a different perspective on the fact that, you know, you can create stuff in different ways. So let's just say we are going to start with our stimulus and we're going to increase blood pressure. So let's just say we increase blood pressure here. Like we go for a run and our our systolic ends up being, I don't know, 140, and we still have maybe 80 mmHg, okay? So blood pressure increased, right? That blood pressure increase has to be sensed by receptors. So we're going to kind of go around in a circle this way. We're going to have baroreceptors. These baroreceptors are in the common carotid. and the aortic arch. Again, we want these to be really close to like where blood would go to the head or where blood would come out of the heart because that's gonna help us make sure that if pressure is leaving the heart or if, if blood volume is leaving the heart in, in a high amount causing a high pressure, then we can start to turn on the homeostatic mechanism really quickly and hopefully recover from that, okay? So this is going to be sent towards the brain, that stimulus, in particular, the medulla oblongata. Okay, medulla oblongata regulates most of the autonomic things in our body anyway. The medulla oblongata is going to make a decision. It's going to say, we need to lower blood pressure. So we have to have two different effectors that are going to help us do that okay one of them is the heart so since blood pressure has increased blood volume has increased that's the other thing maybe you want to think about so pressure is basically a result of or pressure is because of two things one blood volume is high and maybe also the size of your blood vessel is too low I don't want to abbreviate that because, you know, too many abbreviations just kind of confuse you all. It confuses me when you write them on tests too. That's what you want to think about blood pressure, okay? Blood pressure has to do with like, what's the size, or what's the area that you're containing the volume in? Is the area too small and the volume's too big, then pressure is going to be really big. So one of our, so if we go back, okay, one of our effectors has to be the heart because the heart is where our blood volume is being ejected out of. And the other is going to be our blood vessels. It's like in particular arteries, okay? We're gonna have a nice smooth muscle layer going around there. So the medulla oblongata targets the heart and it's gonna tell us to decrease heart rate. And as we decrease heart rate, essentially, what that means is we decrease blood volume. The amount of blood ejecting out of the left ventricle goes down. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to target blood vessels, okay? And so blood vessels, they're going to vasodilate. So what that means is I'm going to get bigger in size, okay? So as my size increases, essentially, both of these things are going to kind of culminate together to essentially cause my blood volume to decrease and my size increases, overall resulting in a decrease in blood pressure. Okay, if you, if you have a hard time thinking about that, think about like 
the amount of fluid in, in, in the opening, right? The opening got smaller, the opening got bigger. And then the amount that's in the opening also got smaller. So there it's, it's hitting the wall less often. So pressure goes down. Okay. As pressure goes back to 120 over 80, then basically you turn off the system. That's our nice homeostatic feedback mechanism. Okay. Once we go back to once we go back to normal, I should really do this here. We turn off the system right there. It's just make, it makes a it, it makes an actual better loop. I didn't mean to make half of it in black and half of it in red, but it is what it is. This is one thing that could happen. Okay, so let's let's think the other thing is we have a decrease in blood pressure. So BP goes down. So again, we want to think about blood volume goes down, or maybe our blood vessel size is really big. Essentially, that's what's happening, right? So why my blood pressure go down? Uh, you're dehydrated. You're not actually drinking enough fluids. So blood volume goes down. You're peeing too much. You peed a whole bunch. And blood volume decreased because you just let a whole bunch of urine out. So in this case, let's say we're at like, I don't know, 110 over 70 or something like that. MMHG, okay. So again, we're going to target our baroreceptors. I should rephrase that, excuse me. This stimulus is going to be uh, sensed by baroreceptors in the common carotid and in the aortic arch. Okay, again, do not abbreviate. Don't expect that your instructor understands your abbreviations. Just because I used it doesn't necessarily mean that when I grade your, your paper, like I understand what that means. You should write out stuff fully to show that you understand, okay? Again, that goes to the medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is going to make decision. I'm not within my range. I need to hit my effectors, okay? I'm gonna, again, I got two targets that I can hit. I can hit the heart and I can hit blood vessels. Okay. Surely make my blood vessel a little bit bigger. Because, right, our blood vessel size is really big. So, one of the things that we're going to want to do is increase blood volume. So, we can increase heart rate and basically blood volume increases. Right? As I contract the heart, more blood exits, more blood ejects. Thus, blood volume should increase. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to vasoconstrict. So I'm going to make my lumen size smaller. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that's like nice and kind of smallish. And both of these things together, let's go back to black. Both of these things together are going to basically cause an effect where here blood volume increased, right? And size decreased, which is basically the opposite of what my stimulus was. And that's gonna cause my blood pressure to increase, an increase in blood pressure. Again, if I go back to normal, I'm at 120 over 80, that's gonna turn off the system, just like that, okay? So this would happen if, yeah, like blood volume decreased. Oh, like maybe you're bleeding out. That's another scenario where if you're bleeding too profusely, basically what has to happen is blood pressure has to increase. So you end up contracting like the heart more, which kind of sucks because you're bleeding out. But makes sense about like why if you're bleeding out, you're spurting more blood because you're trying to get that blood to all the areas of the body as blood volume starts to decrease, which kind of sucks. 
Okay, so this is how we can regulate blood pressure. Remember, when you regulate stuff, sometimes there's a high end and sometimes there's a low end. So that's why you have to have two mechanisms and you have to do two different things. Blood pressure is too high or if blood pressure is too low. How's your body going to go back to that normal range? Okay.